I uh, first want to thank everyone who's joined us this morning uh, to the Davis Homes and uh, in this case, Sims Loman, and we're going to talk about uh, design trends. So we're going to kind of jump right into things here. I'll do a quick overview of what we're going to cover today. And uh, behind the scenes, I'll thank uh, Bridget Jacoby, our Director of Marketing, who is going to keep, keep us on track with the, with the slide side presentation this morning. So uh, first off, you know, just as a quick intro, uh, we're gonna talk about cabinets, which in today's world are almost like furniture. I mean, it's, it's a, not just cabinetry anymore, and you're gonna see some of that as we go through the presentation. Um, countertops, everything from you know, quartz to granite and beyond different styles that are available design-wise with kitchen layouts and the trends that we're gonna, you know, that we're, we're seeing high demand for right now. Um, bathrooms, the same way that the days of the little shower are gone and the big walk-in showers are, are here today. Uh, so baths-wise and then other trending spaces. Uh, there is no question that, that COVID has impacted all of our lives and it has definitely impacted home designs and home design needs over the last uh, 12 to 15 months. Um, and then we'll give everybody, and I will give some opportunity with questions and I'll provide an email uh, address for you to send, send uh, any questions to and we'll do our best to get back to everyone with any individual questions that you might have as well. Okay. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm Jared Klein, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Davis Homes. Been in the industry for just over 30 years uh, both on the real estate, land development, mortgage, uh, and, and, and all related to the home building side of the business. You have an active broker's license in the state of Indiana. And uh, in, in my case, that's for a lot of research and for land searches and for those, uh, for those things. So been in the business in Indianapolis a long time. I've seen a lot of, a lot of change and, and I'm very excited about what uh, the future trend, the current trends and the future trends will be. Again, if you have any questions, just email us at info at davishomes.com. Again, info at davishomes.com. And we'll make sure whether that's myself or one of the presenters to get back to you very quickly. So let me let me bring our, our kind of panel of experts here. And uh, Jim Campbell and Nicole McKean with Sims Lomans, uh, Fine Kitchens and Granite and, uh, and more. They have over 45 years of uh, combined experience in the cabinet industry. They were both about six, I think, when they when they started. So uh, let me let me turn this over to uh, Jim and Nicole. Good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Nicole. We uh, we're here from Zionsville. I don't know how many of you have been in the Sims Loman office or showroom, but you're all are welcome to stop by and take a look at everything that we have here. We showcase a bunch of different brands. Uh, the main brand is uh, the Aristocraft. We love using the Aristocraft. And hi, everybody. I'm Jim. And as, as Jared stated before, uh, Nicole and I have extensive experience in the cabinet and the countertop industry. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I originally learned the custom end of the cabinet industry when I was living in Naples, Florida, and I'm originally a Hoosier. Uh, I moved back to the area several years ago uh, where I've been working with Sims Lohman uh, for the last several years. And, and now I've, uh, Nicole and I have partnered with Davis and we appreciate the opportunity uh, to be on here this morning, Jared, this is awesome. Uh, and hopefully uh, you guys can walk away from this uh, a little more intelligent or a little more informed about the cabinet and the uh, countertop industry. Thanks. All right, so a little bit about Aristocraft. Aristocraft uh, has been around since the 50s uh, and it is actually an Indiana company. It is down in Ferdinand, Indiana. Uh, they produce a lot of cabinets uh, per day. Uh, I think we're probably right around about 9,000 cabinets per day that they produce at the moment. Uh, and one thing about Aristocraft that I really do enjoy working with is, is the fact that they do follow a lot of the design trends. So a lot of the colors that, that we offer to, to Davis are, you know, year by year, they, they take a look at them and 
They simplify the color choices for us. And so we're on point, like 70% of the color choice still is, is white. White is still the most popular in, in the cabinet industry right now. Uh, now we do have a couple different grays that have entered uh, as of right now. Uh, and then of course the earth tones. But I think the other thing about Aristocraft that we do enjoy is, is that they are very conscious of uh, Mother Earth or the stewardship of, uh, of the Earth. And what I mean by that is 90% of the stuff that they do is recycled. And the other 10% goes to other industries like animal bedding and or for fuel for, for factories. So uh, they're very good about that. All right, and as you see here, uh, Jared pulled up, uh, there's 22 different cabinet design, uh, door designs with, with Aristocraft. Uh, what you're gonna see as far as this year, they have two new designs that came out, the Tilden and the Trenton, and we'll see those in a, in a further slide. Uh, but you see there's a lot of earth tones, and as you can see, the predominant is the white and the grays. All right, and thank you for flipping that over to the Sinclair. This is the Birch. Uh, this is the flagship. Uh, this is the first offering in, in the Davis lineup. And what you're going to see here is that's the quill color. That is a brand new color this year. Uh, looks very similar. If you're you know doing a hike, going through the woods, you would see a lot of these same tones on some fallen logs or trees as you uh, gaze throughout. And as you see, a lot of those earth tones are, are, are in there, the burlap, the flagstone, and the umber. Yes, a lot of earth tones. All right. so and now know. Tilden is one of their brand new door styles. Uh, it is a shaker, but it does have a little bit of a detail on the inside edge of the center panel. Uh, just very, very soft contemporary uh, but yet uh, still a very timeless design. Uh, as Jim said, white is about 70% of our sales still to this day. It is going to be timeless. Uh, it is a very timeless color. You can do pops of color with everything else and do another uh, color on the island if you wish, which is one of those trends. Um, the Tilden is a laminate pier style door style. So the advantage with the pier style laminate is when you have uh, the laminate and the expansion and contraction with wood, uh, with the uh, humidity and heat and all of that, you are not going to have that with a laminate versus a paint. Uh, very good advantage to that. So easy to wipe down, easy to clean, uh, you know, for a busy family with a lot of kids and a lot of pets, this is a perfect alternative to a painted product. Available in several colors, um, it is considered to be one of the hottest door styles right now being that it is just a little offshoot of the shaker where it's just a straight shaker door, uh, no detail on the edges. So yeah, this is a great door style. Brelin is another door style, same idea. It is gonna be the pure style laminate, a very, very popular choice. Once again, ease of cleaning. Uh, white is the number one color here. I do see a lot of um, changing of the islands, for example, in a lot of the custom designs that I do, uh, changing the island perhaps to a different color. The gray is very, very hot. Uh, we thought that was gonna be a temporary thing. Uh, I don't think it's temporary. I think it's gonna stick around for quite a while. Uh, the Navy's coming up. So uh, it, it is definitely a really good trend. And here again, very timeless style, timeless design and, and ease of cleaning. Uh, it, it's a great door style. All right, so the next thing we get into is, is the quartz. Uh, there's a, there, Sims Loman, we offer uh, solid surface quartz and, and granite uh, and style stone and the slide that's up. The great thing about the quartz product is it's compacted. And what that means is like natural granite has pits and striations in it, uh, which, you know, granite is beautiful, but it does have to be sealed every couple of years. Uh, with the silestone, stone, it doesn't hold as much bacteria and stuff like that. Uh, and, and both stones from the granite's quartz uh, are on an O scale, which an O scale is the diamond scale, 10 being a diamond uh, silestone stone or the quartzes go from a four to seven in hardness, all right? Now, uh, the great thing is with this stuff is easy clean. Wet cloth, damp cloth, whatever it is, you can clean it down. 
Uh, you typically don't get any staining on this. Of course, it's not recommended to keep anything acidic on any countertop, uh, but the quartz is timeless, it's beautiful. And as we're seeing more colors come out each year, uh, they're getting better and better at, at meeting the design trends that they're keeping up with the granites. And once upon a time, I would tell you that probably 70, 80% of our sales years ago were granite to quartz. If you go to, back in our warehouse, it is now about a 50-50 split. So we're about 50% granite, 50% quartz nowadays. Yeah, and one of the biggest trends with the quartz right now is if you want that marbled look, uh, there are a lot of great alternatives in the quartz that are gonna be a lot less maintenance. Marble tends to be a very thirsty material in its natural state. And my general rule of thumb is if it stains cotton, it's gonna stain marble pretty mm -hmm. well. Uh, acidic things are definitely gonna etch the marble, that kind of thing. Beautiful material, but uh, here again, <clears throat> with the quartz material, we've seen a big trend of people going to the quartz, especially for those marble looks. There's a lot of great, great looks. And as you can see here, there's bringing up the different levels of, of, of quartz at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> what, I, what I really like is, is that Sims Lohman and, and Silestone gets together every year and they look at what's trending in the market. And we try to bring those into the levels that everybody can get to. Because some, some of these courses that are, that are in the builder program now, uh, if you look outside the builder program, would be a level seven and eight. And we've now put them into a level three and four. Uh, and it, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's great to work with the Silestone. Uh, and, and thanks for that. So there you go. There's level three and level four. As you can see, like Nicole stated earlier, a lot of the marble look is in. Uh, you know, what's really great design trend wise, and you tell me if you notice this too, is we've noticed I've been still using the white cabinets and we've been noticing a little bit of the use of the movement uh, with like, if you see the level four there with the black through it. Um, and also too, you, you can get a lot of flavor from your backsplash and whoever's doing your backsplash, you can Definitely. choose. Uh, that's kind of what I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. Definitely the more neutral on the countertop, and then they put their pop of color on the backsplash. Correct. Yes. All right. Kitchen design trends. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys for the, I mean, this great information on that. And, you know, uh, I, I think the certainty side when you go to the courts has really been a big difference. I mean, I just remember years and years, you know, people were choosing granite and you're cutting it from Mother Earth. And you know you're looking at a small sample sometimes, and then you get that big slab out there and the countertop in, and you could get some really crazy design. Uh, again, you know it's, it's it's all natural. Where with the uh, that certainly is controlled uh, when you go to the court. So, uh, Very good point. yeah, in a lot of cases, you know, surprises aren't always good, and uh, <laughs> some some of those some of those granite. Although interesting, you know, weren't always what somebody had uh, had hoped for. So, yeah. Um, yeah. If I could add one more thing on the granite versus the quartz as well, both of them um, do come sealed. Uh, mm -hmm. They are very stain resistant, heat resistant, scratch resistant. Now, resistant is the key word. Neither one of them is stain proof. Neither one of them is going to be um, uh, heat proof. Anything like that. Uh, can you put hot items right on the countertop? Yeah, it's not really recommended, especially with the quartz material because there is some epoxy mixed in with the natural stone. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I usually, my general rule of thumb, no matter what the material is, you still want to use a trivet wherever possible. If it's an emergency, no question, put it down. But uh, it's, it's very, very, very nice stuff. Um, both granite and quartz are beautiful in their own way. It just depends what kind of uh, what kind of top you want and what the look is going to be. Very good. Well, well, we'll run into some kitchen design trends now. And uh, these images that you have here are actually from our 2020 uh, centerpiece show home, and uh, which we had incredible uh, you know feedback on really all aspects of the home, but the kitchen was it was was amazing. And, uh, you know, we have this uh, big islands, uh, you know, 
uh, it almost seems like right now you, you almost can't make an island big enough. They just, it, it's amazing <laughs> how large, how yeah, large they are right now. <laughs> but uh, this is, a, you know, this island has a, the waterfall countertop concept, looks, fan, looks fantastic. I'll let them talk a little bit more detail, but I'll also say, so the, the Davis Homes, uh, you know, family has been in uh, building homes in the Indianapolis and central Indiana area since 1955. And we are the largest on your lot uh, custom builder and in the you know central Indiana. And that allows us or part of our kind of our business structure, if you will, is, is that, you know, we try to, you know, we, we try to offer more. Um, you know, with that, you know, it takes a little longer to get through a process of, of designing a kitchen to this detail that you see in these pictures and going through this than it would be if you just went into a, a production builder subdivision and, and just said, you know, we'll take that floor plan and they have very limited options, limited choices. So that's a faster way to go, but we, our goal is really to give you ultimately what you want to have in the home. It takes a little longer, but you're, you're going to get what you want to have maybe versus settling for, for less. And this, this plan is a great representation of that. You can see that, you know, the, the wood beams in the back, you know, that we, we did in this show, those are, those are elements that we can add to virtually any design along with the kitchen light fixtures and so forth. Great selection there. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we, as we go through the process, but I'll let uh, Nicole and Jim talk about this, uh, uh, this image here, images. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the first thing that you can see is that there's definitely some wood tone uh, mixed in with that timeless white appearance. Now, actually, this door style that you see in here, if you look closely, um, you'd think it's a paint and it's actually a laminate. That's how good the pure style laminate material looks in a finished kitchen. Um, the hood is definitely another option uh, that you can go with. A lot of people do the stainless hood, but if they do want to go with more, uh, more of a down to earth, uh, softer look, they can definitely choose the wood hood option. Uh, and here again, the open shelves, uh, basically that wood uh, element in the kitchen, and it really pulls everything together. It really um, just warms everything up, matches the flooring, everything. Everything complements each other, and that's the whole idea. Uh, when we put these kitchens together for the clients. Uh, we really want everything to mesh, everything to blend well, um, and it, for, for it to be a comforting centerpiece of the home. Yeah, I would agree with you, Cole. I, I think that uh, when we did this design work originally, uh, partnered with, with Davis's designers, uh, we had not done up until that point, I think too many stacked uppers. And uh, as you can see, this design has the stacked uppers to the ceiling. And, and since this model has come out, I, I believe we have probably done 10 to 15 homes with these stacked uppers when people saw the possibilities uh, of the added uh, architectural design aspects that it gives you more height in the kitchen, gives you a finish at the ceiling. And then what I really love is kind of when Nicole touched on the, the wood tones, to me, this design is kind of modern meets the outdoors. Uh, it's a very casual aspect of a kitchen, but it has a very formal effect because it has the waterfall edge on the countertop. And, and you can said we, we used, they used a lot of muted colors in here. You could have bring, you could have brought maybe an accent wall that had maybe a little more color to it in here, but no, the decision was made to use a little more muted colors. And it's that way you can see the earth tones that, that stick out. This is just an example here. This is a customer kitchen. And, uh, you know, again, you can look at that island with the, you know, the, the level of kind of almost furniture that you get to with the legs on that island. Um, and again, kind of the similar, similar color concept, but with the, with the warm uh, brown and the flooring and then the grays, the light fixtures, the stainless hood, the stainless appliances, and really, really brings it all together. I would agree. Uh, the the dark brown floor, the hardwood, the, the dark wood floor with, with the gray and the stone countertop gives you a more of a dramatic appearance. Uh, and, and that's actually, that, that is one aspect about painted cabinetry that you're always gonna love with, with a dark hardwood floor is the pop that you get when it's, when it's put there. Uh, 
And then of course you guys have the stainless steel with the lighting effect above it. I mean, very, I would qualify this kitchen is, is a little more traditional uh, fuel wise and very functional. Uh, you've got the back eating area. Uh, every party always ends up, I mean, if you're entertaining, whatever family, everything ends up in the kitchen. So, and that's why the big, that's why the big islands are so popular right now is that aspect is, and we, that's not going to be uh, stopping anytime too soon. Uh, referring back to my, my design days down in Florida, I remember back in the early 2000s when open kitchen concepts came. And when I moved back to Indiana, and I believe that concept's been here for probably about 15 years now, about the same time it hit Florida, and you're really seeing it take hold. Love the big open concept for sure. And again, here, here you're going to see some nice features. Um, this is our, again, our 2020 centerpiece home shot. Mm -hmm. See the floating shelves, very popular. Again, a very nice look. Now, you, some sacrifices. You maybe lose a little bit of storage. Uh, yes, uh, but but it's the look that they're going for. And then the, the storage can be made up in, in other places. So you've got some, there's that more decorative element to the kitchens than what we maybe we saw you know, especially 10, 15, 20, and, and 30 years ago. So some big, big changes in uh, design. Yeah, I, I would agree, Jared. I think that uh, when, when, uh, when your clients are working with the Davis designer uh, and figuring out where you're going to put things, that's always important to ask, you know, do you cook a lot? Uh, and, and what, what kind of cooking do I do? Am I baking? You know, I have a double oven. Am I having a microwave double oven? You know, what appliances are going in this? And what is the amount of storage I'm going to have left over in my cabinetry? So therefore, do the, do the floating shelves fit into my design aspect? As you can see here, there's a large corner uh, pantry, which means there's added storage in this kitchen. So like, like Jared said before, hey, you know what? We lost a little of the storage with, with the floating shelves, but that's a great design aspect that brought some flavor into the kitchen where you've got the other, you've got the other storage that's in the actual pantry itself. Yeah, the, uh, you know, good to point out on the appliances too, that here that you have, you have double, you know, everyone has different needs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many different appliance, appliance choices and our design team will work with you to determine what is best for yours, whether that is, you know, some people prefer electric cooking, some prefer gas, um, you know, different venting styles uh, and, and again, the, and many different double oven styles as well. So, you know, those are the, and now that the, one of the bigger challenges has been, you go to those be beautiful hoods, where do you put the microwave? Well, you know, now you see, you know, microwave shelves off to the side, or you see microwaves and, and islands and, and everyone's different. I'm short and I don't like to have to go to my island for a, a, a microwave. I like it above. Others just absolutely love it in the, in the island. So again, it's, Truly really about designing that around your personal choices. Yeah. Uh, painted painted cabinets, painted islands. Uh, again, you know, just some more choices. This these are from our uh, on your lot, as we call our on your lot model uh, in Fishers. So if you haven't been to the on your lot model in Fishers and you want to schedule an appointment, we are uh, by appointment only. Again, you know, just email us at info at davishomes.com and we'll get. Uh, get a time scheduled for you to visit. But uh, again, the, these are from that model, show things like the farmhouse sink, uh, some different, again, mixtures in the, in the metals. Uh, so, you know, you've got, you know, you can mix. Now it used to be that, you know, you maybe uh, everything was either chrome or it was brushed nickel, or it was, you know, some variation of a bronze or Venetian bronze. And, and that, you know, now that you're bringing back some of the, uh, you know, some of the gold tones and fixtures. So lots and lots of choices. Nicole and Jim. Yeah, I agree. The mixing of the metals. Um, there's so many people that are afraid of doing that. And I encourage it, actually. It, it just really brings the whole design together, actually, when, when you do have a little bit of change. Uh, and here's a perfect example of that two-tone kitchen again with the island being a different color. Very popular choice still very timeless. Um, if you don't want to commit to a color in the uh, island cabinetry or in the cabinetry itself, paint the walls a different color. Do something um, 
you know, take a chance on the color. You can always paint over it, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, we definitely see a lot of two-tone kitchens. Uh, and like I said, I definitely encourage the mix of metals. I think it's, it, it's kind of that eclectic look. Nothing is wrong. Uh, you, this is all personalized to yourself. You can't make any wrong decisions when it's for you. Right on. I, I think I just might add to you is the placement of the, uh, the glass doors uh, is the design aspect to where basically what you're trying to do is maybe sometimes break up all the cabinetry. And that way, like when you look there, I, I really like the design aspect with the stainless steel and the glass doors side by side. Uh, it really gives you a focal point on that hood that's centered right there. Uh, same thing with the farm sink. Uh, I know you know you know this, Nicole, but I know you do. We, uh, we are doing a lot of farm sinks with Davis right now. Yes. Uh, I will say then we have the stainless steel and, and the white cast iron. So, uh, uh, and, and I honestly, you know, when farm sinks first hit the market years ago, you, you're never quite sure if that's gonna, a trend that's gonna stay or not. Uh, I would say that it's been on the market now for about a decade. And in the last five years, it's been one of those things that has picked up steam. Yes. Uh, and it does give you the ability to just kind of change it up. You know, it gives every room needs a smile, right? And, you know, things can get monotonous when you have cabinets and countertops. Now you have this, this apron front sink that kind of breaks up the cabinets as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this this is a good example. You know, again, we build in a, a variety of price ranges, and you you know, regardless of whether that's a little more on the affordable side or more on the luxury side, you know, everyone's home is their castle. So, you know, this is a is a little more affordable uh, way to do the kitchen. So it, it just has a little more of a traditional, but in the stainless, you know, uh, oven range combo, uh, microwave, you know, microwave and the hood combination. Um, Still, still accented with some beautiful. Uh, see, and I can't even tell anymore. Looking at the granite or. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, that's, yeah, actually, that's, it, it, that's discount white. That is granite. All right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Port, uh, yeah. Version of one. So good. But uh, but you know it's a beautiful beautiful design. A little more simple island again. You know, but still contrasting. So again, we see a lot of that where the, you know, used to be that whatever the island was, the wall cabinets, base cabinets were all the same. You know, now, now you looked at and some of the other examples talked about, you can get a mix with that. Again, that island is almost like a piece of uh, furniture right now. So here, but again, a little more affordable island, a little more affordable kitchen setup, but accented also with a beautiful backsplash and looks fantastic. Yeah, very timeless look still, very clean, straight lines, very classic. Yeah, actually we talked about function for a little bit. As you can see, that you have all your regular base cabinets, but to the left and right hand side at the end runs, you have pot and pan drawer banks. So that's another added feature that a lot of our clients have been switching to now. Uh, and I've, we've even done recently, like just uh, clients for Davis that have had just all drawer banks. Mm -hmm. And you think of like age in place type of situations. And if you're building with on your lot with Davis, a lot of times you're supplying that land and you want to build a house you're not going to move from, right? So therefore, hey, what are we going to do to make this more reasonable for you to age in place? Well, pot and pan drawer banks are that type of thing because they are deep drawers and they hold a lot of they hold a lot of material. And it's one movement: you pull the drawer out and you reach in the cabinet. It is by far it's actually one of my favorite design aspects is hoping to eliminate me reaching into a cabinet. And I, I just turned 50 this year. So I, I want to reach into cabinets as least amount as possible. So what can I say? All right, here we go. Another beautiful image. This is of our one of our model homes in one of our communities. In addition to our On Your Lot uh, program, we do have uh, communities that we build in as well. So this is our one of our model homes in uh, Fortville, mm -hmm. actually. And there you can see that stainless uh, farmhouse, farmhouse sink that uh, that Jim was just talking about, along with again, you know, another some other great examples of islands and the mix of colors. And here, here we went, you know, with kind of the natural, the you know, brown tones on the base cabinets, wall cabinets, and then went white on the island. But in this, uh, uh, I think it's almost a little deceiving in the picture. This 
this island is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Actually, this is actually one of my favorite kitchens. I, I know it's not a very, it's, it's a big kitchen, but it's not one of the most expansive kitchens I've done to date, but I love the, the combination of the wood tone and the painted island. You don't see that a lot, people taking that chance to go ahead and put the wood tone as the perimeter uh, all the time. Uh, but when it's done, and, and this was done beautifully, I, I mean, I, and I love the backsplash that was done with it. Uh, and Jared, I think it's one of those things where you pointed out about the appliance choices as well. And I think this is one where you have the microwave oven combo, the, the glass cooktop, uh, it, it's just well done. There's a lot going on in this kitchen. It's very functional. Uh, and I do love the fact we did the stagger in this with the glass doors. Really, it shows you almost every aspect of design that you can possibly do. Uh, the only thing we're missing is the stacked uppers to the ceiling. And the countertop is the quartz material mm -hmm. here again. And, and this is a polished material. It's, it's definitely a gray. It actually could look a lot like the um, uh, concrete look or anything like that. Uh, it, it's just very clean, very classic. And here again, it doesn't fight with the white color of your island either. It just blends in beautifully. So a lot of, lot of nice ideas here with the wood tones and everything. Uh, I think one other thing to touch on is how you finish the top of the cabinets off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we were back at the home show, you saw that the top of the cabinets were finished off with a riser and crown to the ceiling. A lot of times we use a crown called MT crown or MC crown. What we're also seeing a trend of is a flat crown. We're saying we haven't been using a lot of that with Davis yet, but you'll, I, I, I got a feeling you'll start seeing that integrated in some cabinet designs uh, if we get a more modern mix of, of customer. Bathroom design trends. Yeah, let's hit this. So again, I, I mentioned a little earlier, I think on the showers, you know, like or like big islands, you know, the trend for big islands has somehow translated into huge walk-in showers. <laughs> um, because, and uh, it's it's amazing. So we're going to see some great imagery as we uh, go through these next uh, these next slides. Again, this is this image is actually from our 2019 uh, centerpiece show home. And I mean, look at those cabinets. I mean, this is this is a pure luxury bathroom set up here. Uh, and even to the left there is a coffee bar. And uh, I will say that was probably one of the most popular features of that home show uh, was people just love the fact that they could just, you know, literally, I think, go from bed to about eight feet away and have their coffee brewing for them in the morning. So and maybe that means we're all getting a little spoiled. But yeah, honestly, uh, I love that, yeah. yeah. That'd be great. But obviously a beautiful <laughs> image here. Um, yeah, so I just actually, it's funny you bring this drawing up. I just designed uh, this area very similar to this for another client of yours uh, on the custom end of things. So beautifully done. Um, it, it's just it, definitely the trend is here again, going more towards furniture pieces uh, when you do have the space, uh, and this definitely emulates that. It's just a beautiful way to uh, separate the pools. It's a beautiful way for storage, uh, you know, lingerie, underwear, you know, all of the, all the um, uh, amenities that you actually need in the bathroom are right at your fingertips in this vanity as well. At least that's how I would use it. Uh, it it's great, great functional space as well as beautiful. Uh, which is, you know, ultimately what we try to do in every every aspect of designing a kitchen, a space, you know, laundry, everything. We want it to be functional, and this is definitely a beautiful and functional piece. So, um, yeah, and here again, wood tone, and you've got the tile on the floor, and I'm sure that's heated floors too, isn't it? <laughs> I would go for that. <laughs> Well, actually, if, if I could add uh, one other piece to that, I, I think that uh, when I think of a bathroom for me personally, uh, and, and I know not everybody's like this, but I think of Oasis, you know, a place where I can go relax, a place where I feel really comfortable. And, and I think that's a lot of times when you do see the softer to medium wood tones yeah. that can be introduced. Uh, and also too, Jared, you touched on a great point when it comes to the, uh, the areas 
if, if you, and I think this goes back into the age and place type of thing, you know, maybe that is the idea that you want to have a, a small coffee area or beverage fridge that's right off the master suite. So uh, you, you, you don't go to the kitchen every morning to get stuff. Yeah, it's well done. Yeah, this is a good image of the, uh, that one of those big walk-in showers. Uh, and, and, you know, not to say that, I mean, if there is absolutely a trend to the larger walk-in showers and going away from, uh, from tubs. Uh, but at the same time, you also have a lot of design on the tub side that it, it, where people want, still want to have that ability to, to soak in the tub. And there's different styles. Uh, you know, we don't see as much of the, like we did in the 80s and 90s with the jets and the, you know, the oval soaking tub styles like that. But there's new styles, freestanding uh, free uh, tubs as an example. So a lot of a lot of different choice. And you can definitely tell from this picture too that and, and this kind of hits on the bigger shower. Along with a bigger shower goes a bigger bathroom as well. Larger master bed bathrooms are definitely on trend. Uh, you know, and the same thing that Jim just said, you know, you want the tranquility, you want the experience in your bathroom. Um, you know, when you are trying to relax, you want it to be a beautiful space. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you do have that space, you want to fill it all up with the stuff that you love. So this is a great example of that. It, it's just very tranquil, very peaceful and very functional. Yeah, actually, and I would agree with the functional part as well, because if you see here, you have the medium wood tone to light wood tone, which is a little more rustic looking uh, combined with the light countertop, which to me fits into function because for me, the bathroom is, I want to be able to see what I'm cleaning. Uh, and when stuff gets on it, that, that's, that, that would be important to me. It's not important to everybody, but I, I just really, and I like the contrast as well. It gives it a nice pop. Very good. Yeah, here we have, again, an example of another trend, which is how we see a little bit of. So you, you can see the, the tile backsplash behind the sinks there. Um, with the shelf, but just uh, again, you know, another design trend. I'll let Nicole and Jim comment on further. Uh, the spa look, right? So, so this look's been going on for quite some time. If you ever get the hotel experience, uh, you go to the hotels. A lot of hotels nowadays are going to have the middle part between the the sinks opened up. That's where you have towels and whatever you know stored in there. And, and that's what this concept is. And now Davis on this part took the design to another level, in my opinion, because we did away with the actual backsplash in here. And what we did is all I did was supply them with literally a six inch three quarter by six inch uh, piece of material as the shelf that you see everything set behind. And they built a backsplash out of tile. Uh, it's almost... Uh, the concept would be almost a little bit of mid-century modern updated is how I would qualify that. And if I'm wrong on that, please, I, I can be corrected by all means. Uh, but I really like the tones. And there you see that's a gray expo quartz that was used in there. Uh, and then we haven't really touched on this yet, but if you see here, the, the hardware matches what appears to be the window frames in there too as well. So that's a darker hardware. And that's where people kind of miss out sometimes. You can get, uh, I always ask my clients, well, when you're thinking about decorative hardware, do you want the hardware to be part of the cabinetry or do you want it to make the statement? There's a difference. And, and that's just one thing that the client has to answer personally. So you have anything else to add? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with the hardware. Um, you know, you can definitely tell that this does not blend, actually stands out. Mm -hmm as more of a piece of jewelry, so to speak. Uh, and it definitely, you know, and here again, um, I can't really see very well, uh, but I think you've got the mix of metals here again in this bathroom where you've got the chrome faucets, you've got the black uh, poles or the oil rump bronze, whatever that finish might be. Uh, there's no right or wrong to the design. And that additional shelf on the back of the backsplash is just, that is a great little, um, place for candles, for, you know, for really anything else that you want to 
to uh, decorate with. Uh, it's a great little additional, just additional decor piece. I love it. Well, I, and one, one other thing before we go to the next slide, and I, I'm going to go back to the backsplash. I think it's a great way to add uh, detail and design to a bathroom and not knowing what that full well costs, but knowing that the cost is not going to be astronomical. Yeah, and it's just a simple statement. It's yeah. not overstated at all. Just really nice. Yeah, the, the, okay, so the, <laughs> we're just reading the, the uh, sayings here. The tile wall, what we've been seeing a lot of too is not only the bathroom, but you have the kitchen where behind the hood, perhaps you have nine foot ceilings and the cabinets are only going up to eight feet or perhaps they go to the ceiling. But where the hood is, whether it be a independent wood decorative hood or a stainless steel hood, we see a lot of tile work going all the way to the ceiling to go right with that hood. Great, great way to make a little statement as well uh, without overstating that area. Um, great blending materials. You know, you have the mix of wood, you have the mix of uh, the the champagne bronze, it looks like, of the, of the faucets. Uh, you know, everything coordinates, which is great. I actually would like to add to, uh, I'll take my glasses off and act like I'm really telling you something. Uh, so when it comes to bathrooms and kitchens, if you notice here, this one's called the Benton Birch and it's in a burlap stain. The Benton door is a standard or traditional overlay door which means it's got like an inch and a quarter reveal around the outside of the cabinet. And in the kitchens, you've noticed we've used a lot of full overlay doors. So if you're thinking budget conscious and stuff like that, one can always use uh, the full overlay doors in the kitchen or the main areas that you really want to make your statement. And you still get the same colors and appearance in your bathrooms. And you can use the traditional uh, or standard overlay doors, which are a little more cost effective than the Oh. The doors. Yeah. Hi, Becky. You're, there we go. <laughs> Again, a double double vanity tile wall here. Get just some get nice mixed of mix of cabinetry. Uh, a different uh, kind of a backsplash area there with that kind of a stone look. It is the stone. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yep. It looks like it's the uh, the round stone. Uh, that in which, like you said, what that does is because you have the uh, shaker style of the cabinet, all right, mixed with round. So you mess, you mix some geometric figures is what you've done, mm -hmm. uh, it, which makes you probably gives you a, a little more. Uh, you know what, guys? When I when I look at that, I almost think of like an outback or Australian or Africa type of scenery. Uh, and then you have the hardware, which pulls in the color from the backsplash as well, yeah. and the countertop. Yeah. It's definitely more of an earthy look, which is great. Everything blends together. I was going to say the exact same thing that Jim did. The hardware actually accents that tile wall and pulls together. everything together. Yeah. The natural stone, you can see the natural uh, veins in that, which just here again brings another great natural element to the, speed, to the space. I want to add to that too. When when you visit when you guys visit the Davis showroom uh, on priority, uh, I would tell you that a lot of this stuff is in their showroom, and this is stuff that their designers work with you to find out. You know, what's your style? What are you looking to do? Each room, like I say, every room needs a smile, right? And like this to me, that that backsplash gives this room a smile. We can't do everything you find on Pinterest, but we'll do our best. No, you can't. But they, they, they work hard to try to get to where they want to be. Um, beverage centers, kitchenettes, and we see those in, in a number of different areas and homes. You can see this again, our 2019 uh, centerpiece home. It gave us an opportunity to highlight a beverage center that was a little more in, in closer proximity to kind of a great room and entertaining area. So, you know, you could set that up for uh, for entertaining as opposed in in and almost divide your entertaining space so when you you know when you have gatherings and you have the group that's in the kitchen around that big huge kitchen island and you have others that are in the big beautiful great room area 
you know, there's a beverage center is an opportunity to serve from another location. Uh, and that's an example of what we have, um, what we have here. And we see those in kind of that wet bar uh, or dry bar, you know, type of a structure. So again, wet bar being that there's at least maybe some type of a, a bar sink there, dry being that it's more countertop space, uh, but some examples of that. This is our uh, flex suite uh, kitchenette as we show it here. So in the 2020 centerpiece home, uh, as we've seen a lot of need for, I'm gonna call it add-on flex space, which could be an in-law quarter, a nanny quarter, uh, that college student that just won't quite get out of the house yet, but maybe you want a little, maybe you want a little bit more distance from them. Uh, you know, a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, Airbnb has become popular, so in some in some locations that that will work as well. But these are some examples of kind of kitchenette, so just a, a mini kitchen and a and a smaller living area, um, and those can be very personalized as we did in, in this image. And I was gonna, I was gonna say, uh, you know, in-laws' quarters are becoming increasingly uh, more popular in the home. Just, you know, whether the in-laws want to be there to be with their grandkids, or if they've outgrown their space and just need, or not outgrown, but they've sold their space because it's gotten too big, and they want to be part of uh, their family living closer and that kind of thing. Um, it's always great to have this little flex space, whether for visiting or for staying permanently. So um, it's definitely become more popular to, to have either adjoining houses or adjoining spaces uh, with the in-laws. Yeah, Im important to know, and we just will work with you on this. Uh, some municipalities, some counties have, have certain restrictions on, uh, on add-on living areas. So, you know, if, you, if that's something you're considering, just get with one of our sales team and we'll see what we can do to get, you know, make sure that that's uh, whatever you're wanting to design is again, gonna be okay in that specific uh, county or municipality. Yeah, very good point. Yep. Yeah. Uh, basements uh, and loft kitchenettes, you know, no question the basements. Basements have been, you know, uh, basement bars have been a thing for a long time. And, uh, you know, lots of different design choices there. Again, you can see, you know, wet bar uh, examples here, um, but we're seeing that now even in loft areas. So we're in some cases, maybe someone doesn't want to add a basement, but they have a bonus room area and they want to add, uh, add, and that's what the case is. In fact, in the picture that we have here is that we did this in a loft, kind of a bonus room area and uh, turned out beautiful. Very functional space. And even now, too, a lot of uh, a lot of my clients really enjoy putting in two beverage centers, whether it one be a wine center and the other one be beverage uh, or, you know, just two totally uh, all wine or beer or whatever. So uh, definitely a lot of functionality is starting to um, meet design. Uh, in the wet bar. You know, it's not just purely decorative anymore. It used to be the wow factor of all of the glass, all the little, you know, open bottles, that kind of thing. It's definitely more trended towards the cleaner look, but uh, definitely a uh, very functional and spacious area. Again, here, you know, you get a lot of you know, examples of those different kind of beverage centers and uh, wine and cocktail areas. I'll let uh, Nicole and Jim talk about the features it finishes. Yeah. So, guys, really, in this beverage center you're seeing here is, is, is pretty simple. It's literally a drawer base and an end panel. Uh, the, uh, the actual uh, wine storage area was constructed by the Davis trim carpenter on site, carpenter on site. Uh, very talented man, by the way. Anyways, uh, so the point is, is that whatever you're looking to do, whether it be wine area, beer, uh, scotch whiskey, uh, whatever functional area you're looking to do in there, we'll work with you to figure out what, what fits you the best. Uh, and if you, if you bring ideas to the table, we'll see if we can make it happen. 
you know, to hit this hit this already that uh, beverage center or coffee coffee area. Again, this one this one uh, is from our 2020 mm -hmm. centerpiece home, and uh, remarkably, and again, one of the most talked about areas was just again loving loving that they would have that little uh, coffee bar set up so close to uh, close so close to the uh, to the to the master bedroom or in the master bedroom. This one also, and you can't see in this picture necessarily. You know, we had a fireplace in here. Um, it, it was really more of just a, it was really just a, a spa area, uh, more than almost even a, a bedroom in itself. So it was like a luxury going out to a luxury hotel somewhere. Yeah. A resort. Leave the space. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, and, and you know what? I, I think you just you just hit the nail on the head. Is a lot of people want to feel like. I mean, it always feels like when you go to your bedroom or whatever and you have like a little kitchenette or a coffee area or a little bar area, you almost feel like you're on vacation. So that's the whole concept of having that type of thing in or around the master, master bedroom is the oasis kind of your go back to, Hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to go to defrag myself and go to the bedroom and, you know, make myself a scotch or whatever it is you're doing in there. It's an affordable feature. It's not, it's not overdone. Yep. And uh, but add, adds just a little nice feature to the room. Uh, laundry room too. There, you know, laundry, laundry rooms today are very different than they were 20 and 30 years ago, especially. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've we've cer certainly seen some very interesting trends in that. We'll go through some of those now. Yeah, the dog spa is probably one of the biggest ones. Our, our you know, for some <laughs> people, the the dogs are the kids or. Other cases, yeah. maybe the dogs are treated better than the kids. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> the nice, <laughs> so nice setups with uh, dog wash areas, uh, along with just the look of the cabinetry and tile. Yeah, yeah. I've actually um, worked on a couple laundry areas that are prep kitchens as well. You know, so you've got the extended area being built into just like a either a scullery or a additional prep area for the kitchen area, whether it be just inside where you are uh, going to the deck or to the porch in the backyard, whatever. But uh, that's become very popular. Uh, pets, uh, a cabinet built for the cat litter. You know, that's been popular. Uh, pet beds, uh, water and food that can disappear into storage when you're not using it. It's just, there's all kinds of little elements that make the laundry more functional just for your whole family. Um, open countertops underneath the cabinets uh, to allow for the little carts for your laundry separating. Um, so many different options now, and we can fit a lot of cabinets into tight spaces. You know, whatever your needs are, here again, we can, we can, uh, we can do as long as we know the direction that you need uh, for your storage needs. But yeah, the dog spa, the pet beds, all of that is all part of the laundry now. Yeah, this one is just fantastic as well. So, you know, here you're incorporating in a, a small, not, not the traditional big laundry tub sink, but, you know, a really nice cabinet sink set up. Uh, folding areas on top of the washer dryer and then of course a, a, a place for Fido there uh, to the left of the, of the uh, wash machine. So, Good. Don't want to say anything about that one? Yeah. Uh, work from home design trend. There, there is no question that this, this may be one of the biggest impact areas from COVID with home design. You know, it was not uncommon for homes to have maybe one study or den area, uh, but now all of a sudden you found that you had, you know, uh, multiple adults needing you know, separate workspace. You had children that were now studying from home and wow, did we see a demands change uh, regarding the use of space for office and den areas. So this is an example of kind of a study area that we did in a loft and, uh, you know, where, where it was designed for they had a couple children, you know, in this setup and, you know, both could study there and have their space to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see some of the cabinet and tile differences there as well. You know, 
Um, and I oh. love, yeah, I love the element of a little bit of the wood along with the gray cabinets. It, it looks fantastic. And that's another element, you know, here again, you're mixing different wood colors and they complement each other so well. Uh, so we can do that. You just need to, um, you know, just suggest the color scheme that you're after and we can make it happen. Very functional space. And it used to be, the home office used to be even as simple as the homeschool child. Uh, but now it definitely has expanded to the kids that are staying at home. Um, you know, whether the children are little and they do these Zoom classes. My daughter is an elementary school teacher and she had the difficult task of teaching kindergartners uh, online. So, you know, definitely a need for that private space for that child to concentrate no matter what age they are and to have this home office space that they can sit at their own desk area, I think is very important. Yeah, I'd like to add to uh, what Nicole's talking about. Uh, used to be then a, a lot of the kitchens in the 80s and the 90s, you would see the little drop area, little desk area right there. Uh, now that's kind of referred to as kind of a drop zone. And now a lot of times that's located in between the garage and, and the main kitchen area, a lot of times you're walking through the garage and there's a drop zone, which means now what am I going to do? For this? And now when, you know, Jared spoke about, you know, COVID, everybody's been dealing with that this year. I mean, I know I worked from home for, for the last year. Now I'm back in the office. Uh, luckily, I had a desk and a little area to work in, you know, but what do you do if it's, you know, a, a family of four? You know, something like this may be in the mix for you because uh, I, I see a lot of the trend and, you know, listening to the news just the other night that a, a lot of places are going to make working from home standard now. So now you're going to see a lot more of this trend going on uh, and you don't just want, hey, I'm going to put a stand up desk in the corner and that's what's going to be. Not. No, you're going to want a piece of furniture. So we'll work with you and figure out what you need. Yeah, craft space is another one. I think that kind of goes to that at home, you know, people spending more time at home with their children, uh, maybe getting a little more in touch with their own hobby desires. And uh, so that's certainly, uh, and this is a good example of, 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 uh, of kind of the structure with, with cabinet material that is pretty amazing. I mean, you, you know, we think of just cabinets as cabinets, but the, the optional features that are available with them are, are very impressive. Yeah. I, I agree, Jared. This this is the 2020 home show, uh, wrapping room, whatever hobby room, slash you know homeschool desk area. Uh, I remember when I was designing this, uh, uh, the designer was asking for you know places to do wrapping, you know bows, uh, function for bookcases, uh, knee spaces for people to work at, things like this, and this is what we came up with. Guys, this is all cabinetry found in the Aristocraft lineup yeah. put together. So it's very functional and, and there's a there's several SKUs. So we, we, we can make all this stuff work into your design. Yeah, we can be very creative with the pieces given. That's for sure. You just let us know your needs and we can do it. And Nicole and Jim, let's say that somebody's, you know, maybe, maybe they're in an existing home and they want it, you know, we all want everybody to build new. But let's say they're in their existing home or maybe they, you know, from a budget standpoint, this is something that you know, they just need to do later. They can work with you on that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just give us a call. We can set up an appointment. Very good. You bet. Uh, I want to, you know, want to thank, you know, really, you know, Nicole and Jim um, for, for putting together the slide presentation with their, you know, with their design elements and for being here with us today. It's a lot of information, um, you know, you know, again, feel free to reach out at info at davishomes.com. You can see uh, Jim and Nicole's contact information there as well. We'll hold that for just a moment uh, so you can write down a phone number or copy an email there. Take, take a picture with your cell phone. That's a good, great idea, Jim. <laughs> I'm here all day. Yeah, we're, <laughs> reach out to them directly if there's anything that you have on the on the, the kitchen cabinet feature side and then certainly reach out to us on any uh, on any home questions 
So again, uh, you can hit us at info at davisholmes.com or newhome at davisholmes.com. Any one of those will work, uh, 317-548-HOME. Um, and then, you know, hopefully you're following us on social media. Uh, we're, at, we're out there all over the place. Uh, the next Design Trends event will be coming up on June 15th. So we'll, we'll be talking there about, you know, it'll be, you know, faucets and I mean, there's just so many cool material. We looked at a few of them, you know, today as we were going through the slide presentation, but even when you get into, you know, touch, touch on, touch off faucets and different, uh, you know, metal finishes and so forth, there'll be even more to talk about on uh, June 15th. But again, we thank you for joining us today and uh, look forward to working with you on either your new kitchen bath redesign and in particular on a brand new uh, Davis built home. Hey, and Jared, I'd like to add on something on behalf of me, Nicole, we really appreciate the opportunity uh, and we enjoy the continued partnership with Davis. So yes, thank you. Thank you so much.